Welcome to Saints and Feasts of the Catholic Calendar, meeting the greatest men and women who have ever lived. April 29th, St. Catherine of Siena, Virgin and Doctor, 1347 to 1380, patron saint of Italy, Europe, and fire prevention. Her frightening intensity prayed the popes back to Rome. St. Peter was not martyred in Frankfurt, Germany, Alexandria, Egypt, or Jerusalem. He could have been. God, in his providence, wanted St. Peter's blood to spill on Roman soil so that his one holy Catholic and apostolic church would drive its roots into the ground of the then capital of the world. This does not mean that Catholicism is bound to St. Peter's Basilica in Rome in the same way that Judaism was bound to the temple in Jerusalem. Rome does not have the same theological significance for Catholics as Jerusalem does for Jews. Nor is Rome the successor of Jerusalem. Rome is not a holy city like Mecca is for the Muslims. The primacy of the Pope over the universal church is based on his being the successor of St. Peter. This is an indisputable historical fact. However, the Petrine ministry is one thing, and where it is exercised is another. The location of the Petrine ministry has never had the same theological weight as the ministry itself. Peter, yes, always. Rome, yes, so far, mostly. Today's saint was a third order Dominican, a mystic, a contemplative, and an ascetic who used secretaries to compose her letters because she could not read or write until the last few years of her life. Yet for all of her interior distance from the world and its concerns, St. Catherine of Siena threw herself at the feet of the Pope, then reigning in Avignon, and begged him to return to Rome. The Babylonian captivity of the papacy in Avignon had gone on for almost seven decades and caused grave scandal. The move to Avignon was not due to an irreversible cultural shift, such as a Muslim conquest or a decimating plague. The popes did not abandon Rome because it was a carcass. The transfer of the papal court to Avignon, a city within the papal states, was the result of politics. It is not often that a single person can affect the course of history as much as a battle, a treaty, or a council does. Incredibly, though, St. Catherine of Siena's efforts to return the papacy to Rome were successful. She wrote so powerfully, spoke so passionately, and exuded such intense holiness that the Pope was overwhelmed. She also seemed to have prophetic powers. Even knowing what the Pope was thinking or had previously thought, she was frighteningly intense and could not be ignored. Thus, 67 years of seven French popes ruling far from Rome ended. In 1376, Pope Gregory XI finally abandoned Avignon and followed in the footsteps of so many medievals. He went on pilgrimage to the tomb of St. Peter, and he stayed. The Eternal City was a widow no longer. St. Catherine was born the 24th of 25 children in a pious family imbued with the love of God. She eagerly drank in all that her parents poured out. She went for true gold early in life. She practiced extreme penances, eating only bread and raw vegetables, and drinking only water for her entire adult life. She conversed with God, experienced ecstasies and visions, and dictated hundreds of letters, books, and reflections filled with the most profound spiritual and theological insights. In 1970, she was the first layperson and first woman to be made a doctor of the church in recognition of her profound mystical theology. Catherine died at the age of 33, worn out by penances, travel, and the burden of her involvement in so many pressing ecclesial affairs. She was canonized in 1461. Her body lies under the main altar of the Dominican Church of Santa Maria Sopra Minerva in Rome. Her mummified head is found in her native Siena. St. Catherine of Siena, your love of God was expressed in so many vibrant ways and in a fervent love of his church. We seek your powerful intercession from your exalted place in heaven to make all Catholics more ardent in their love of the Trinity, of the Passion, and of the Papacy. Amen.